Meanwhile, in Bangladesh, Mohammad Yunus is making some big promises. He is pledging fresh elections and major reforms. Yunus is also starting a new campaign to bring Sheikh Hasina back. He plans to send a formal request to India soon. July, August. The initiative for justice we have undertaken regarding the July to August massacre is progressing well. We will formally request the repatriation of the fallen autocrat Sheikh Hasina from India. Our commitment extends beyond addressing the July to August massacre. We will ensure justice for all the misdeeds of the past 15 years. Hours after that statement, there was another news flash from Dhaka. Bangladesh charged over, over a dozen former officials. This includes 11 former ministers, a judge and a former government secretary. All of them held top positions in the Sheikh Hasina government. Now all of them have been accused of, and I'm quoting, enabling massacres. That is the charge against them. And that's not the end of today's newsworthy developments from Dhaka. This was followed by an announcement. Investigators have been given one month to finish the probe against Sheikh Hasina. They have to submit a report by the 17th of December. And who has set this deadline? The International Crimes Tribunal of Bangladesh, a body that Hasina herself had set up many years ago to investigate the genocide of 1971. That's when Bangladesh fought for its liberation from Pakistan. Now the same tribunal is investigating Sheikh Hasina. It has launched at least three probes of mass murder against her. And this is all on expected lines. With these cases, a foundation has been laid. An investigation will follow, an investigation with a predetermined outcome. And the final report will provide the basis for action against Sheikh Hasina. That's when the formal extradition request is expected to come. In fact, Dhaka has been exploring other means too, like the Interpol. Last week, they reached out to the Interpol seeking their help to bring Hasina back. If there was any doubt, over their intent. It is being dispelled with each passing day, which brings us to India. New Delhi will have to take a decision soon on how far it wants to go to shield an old friend. Will India consider the request to send Hasina back? Should India consider such a request seriously? We ask because it comes from Mohammed Yunus and his team. They're not elected representatives. Yunus is not a prime minister or a president. Yunus is a chief advisor, leading a government in transition. Yes, he's promised fresh elections, but he refuses to set a deadline. I am not sure how much reform we will be able to make, but I promise you, if you give us the opportunity, we will complete some mandatory reforms and then go for the highly sought-after election we all are looking for. I would request you to keep patience till then. We want to create an exemplary electoral system that can be followed for years. It will save our country from annual political crisis. To ensure these, I am asking for the necessary time from you. Mohammed Yunus was handpicked to restore order when Bangladesh was burning. But now it seems his own reforms agenda is going up in flames. And he said this himself, that he does not know how much progress he will make. Instead of restoring democratic institutions, Yunus is prioritizing appeasement and freebies. He has announced a compensation for those who protested against Sheikh Hasina. A compensation of 30 lakh taka, that's around $25,000 for every victim of the anti-government protest last year. And what about the elections? On this, like you heard him, Yunus wants Bangladeshis to be patient because he may stick around for another four years. Again, these are his words. This is what Mohammed Yunus said in an interview, that the interim government could run the country for up to four years. Political parties in Bangladesh are unlikely to agree to this. Parties like the BNP, they're becoming impatient. BNP is the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, the party of Khalid Azia, arch rival of Sheikh Hasina. BNP members have criticized Yunus for avoiding deadlines on reforms. They want a clear roadmap to elections and they're unwilling to wait for more than a year. The party has even threatened protests. Now, what does all of this tell you? Bangladesh is far from achieving stability. In fact, they may be facing more challenges ahead. And that's a worry for India too. India's High Commissioner to Dhaka has spoken. He said that they've maintained ties with Dhaka despite the evolving political situation. As for the status of Sheikh Hasina, he said, and I'm quoting, the relationship cannot be reduced to a single agenda or issue. Not sure if Mohammed Yunus will pay heed to this. India-Bangladesh ties cover a diverse range of interests and a long history. And they should not be held hostage to politically motivated campaigns.